everyone, I'm Andrea from the Firebase team, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with remote config for the web. Why would you want to use remote config in the first place? Well, you can use it to change and customize behavior and appearance of your app without making your users retrieve an app update. This can be really useful for feature flagging if you have a new feature that you want to test out with a small group of users before rolling out widely. It's also useful in A-B testing for when you have different approaches to solving a problem and want to test them out to see which option yields the optimal user engagement or retention or other result. Additionally, it's helpful if you want to personalize your app automatically using machine learning. The best part of all of this is it can be done with just a few lines of code. So let's go ahead and see how we would do this. There are many ways to include a library in a web app. But in this video, we'll be using NPM and Webpack. If you want more information on how to set that up with Firebase, check out this other Firebase fundamental video. Let's get started. Here, I'm in my editor and starting from the same starter code you'll have at the end of our setup video linked in the description. Following that video involves installing Firebase with NPM, which means you'll have remote config ready to use as well. So now in my entry point file index.js, I can initialize a Firebase app after grabbing the configuration information from our Firebase project in the console. Next, we'll have to get the instance of remote config, which holds all of our parameter values. Every Firebase sub package has a getter function that retrieves an instance of a service, like remote config in this case. As a side note, don't worry about calling this get remote config function too many times, as it returns the same instance when you call it with the Firebase app. Now, let's do something fun with remote config. We're going to display a Spanish greeting message to 10% of Spanish speaking users and an English greeting otherwise. To set up values, I'll need to create a parameter in Firebase console, and then we'll write code to use it in the web app. In Firebase console, we'll navigate to remote config. This screen is called the parameter editor. Here, I can create a parameter with a name, select the data type for the value of this parameter, then set a value that will appear based on a condition. Let's call our parameter greeting. And since we want to show a message banner, the data type will be a string. Next, we'll create a condition, which can be many things like your user's country or region, platform, or device language. It can also be a random percentile of all users. Since we want to show a message banner to 10% of our Spanish speaking users, let's create a condition named Spanish 10%. We can then pick languages from this dropdown, and we can type in Spanish here and select it. This will get our users who use their device in Spanish. To get only 10% of our Spanish speaking users, we'll add another condition by clicking on and, and we can pick user in random percentile and type in 10 here. In this bar down here, we can see how many users satisfy this condition. Let's hit the create condition button, which then will be added to this parameter. For all users who satisfy this condition, we'll give them a value, in this case, the message banner we want to show. Let's go ahead and enter hola, which means hello. For each parameter, we'll also have to show a default value, the value that this parameter will have when the condition above here is not met. Let's go ahead and make the default value hello. You might wonder what this button does here on the right, where it says use in-app default. If this is selected, no value is provided for that parameter when an app fetches the values. All right, so now we have a parameter all set with this conditional value. 10% of our Spanish users will see hola and everyone else using our app will see hello. We'll save the parameter and publish changes which makes the values available for our app to consume. Let's take a look at the app code to see how we can use these values. First, we'll have to pull the values from Firebase known as fetching and then enable them on the device known as activating. Conveniently, there is a function called fetch and activate that does both of these at once, and it returns a promise resolving to true if the current call activated the fetch configs or false if the fetch configs were already activated. If we wanted to fetch or activate only, there are the respective functions to do that as well. Why would we want to fetch only or activate only without doing the other? Well, if we continuously fetch and activate, users may have jarring experiences. Let's say we change the value on Firebase console. Instead of hello, we want to say welcome instead. 
and we publish these changes, which means these values are immediately available to our users. Now, as a user of the app, imagine us being on the page with the greeting message, and we currently see hello. If the greeting message parameter was fetched and activated, that hello will suddenly change to welcome, which would be very odd. Imagine if these jarring experiences extended beyond the greeting message. What if some functionality changed while a user was using it? Probably not a great user experience. Fetching at some given interval is normally fine because it won't actually change any of the values in the app, but activating the values needs to be done thoughtfully. A good time to activate fetched values is the next time a user opens the app because the user will have the same experience while in the app this time. After we fetch and activate the values, we'll want to use those values in the app code to serve to users. To get a particular parameter, we'll use the parameter name as a key to get the parameter value from the remote config object. Whatever value gets stored in the greeting variable is the value served to a user for the greeting parameter. And just as a reminder, since we set it to be hello or hola in the console, Users will be served one of those values based on whether they satisfy the condition of being a Spanish speaker in our randomized 10% user group. We'll use this variable in our HTML element that displays this greeting. Related to fetching and activating, fetch calls are throttled and return an exception if an app fetches too many times in a short time period. The default minimum fetch interval is 12 hours, meaning configs won't be fetched more than once in a 12 hour window, regardless of how many fetch calls are made in your code. You can configure this to a higher number resulting in more time between fetches by setting settings.minimumFetchInterval.millis in your app. And you'll want to make sure it doesn't fetch too frequently, otherwise the calls will get throttled. However, during development, you might want to fetch and activate configurations very frequently to rapidly iterate as you develop and test your app. To do this, you can temporarily set it to a low number, decreasing the amount of time between each fetch. The setting should be used for development only, not for an app running in production. If you're just testing your app with a small 10-person development team, you are unlikely to hit the hourly service side quota limits. But if you push your app out to thousands of test users with a very low minimum fetch interval, your app would probably hit this quota, and we wouldn't want that. So that's it. Remote Config can help you change and customize your app. And through making parameters on Firebase Console for specific audience groups by using conditions, you can fetch parameter values in your code to change values based on your user. And these same parameters can be used for A-B testing and personalization with just one or two more lines of code. The Remote Config JavaScript SDK is open source on GitHub, so feel free to check that out. And there are more Firebase Fundamentals videos if you enjoyed this one. Happy coding. <music>